The Radio Forest Podcast. Forest, James Young from the rock band Sticks. James J.Y. Young, how are you, man? I'm really good. How about yourself? Hey, I'm doing great. You guys are coming here to Boise to the Morrison Center. How's the tour been going for 2023? I'm amazed that, uh, you know, with the pandemic, it's sort of killing uh, touring a couple years ago. The rebound demand for a lot of bands, particularly ours, from my vantage point, you know, has just been phenomenal. And uh, classic rock lives on. Still in business for a while. Now, last year, you guys were inducted into the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum Hall of Fame. How did that go? I haven't seen any video from that. Was that filmed or anything? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, it's kind of something that, I mean, Jim Peterick is the guy who uh, wrote Eye of the Tiger and was in the band The Ides of March. And there was a few other local people that he enlisted. But I I was a little too busy with uh, some family issues. I had to be involved in that. But uh, uh, so uh, there's been no, it was no real giant party or orgy or anything like that (laughs) and i'm I'm so sorry to hear about the passing of your wife how have you been doing uh well uh they say it takes at least 18 months to sort of get get past the grief and i was uh uh, not to drop names but i just i have a dear friend that i met on an airplane going back about 20 years now she's the widow of the third man to walk on the moon a pecan charles pete conrad and uh, she's a widow, Nancy, and somehow we just remained friends. And she was telling me about how some guy was hitting on her and <laughs> looking for my advice. So uh, it's an interesting world we live in, and I'm still having fun doing this, and I'm going to do it till the day they got to scrape me off the stage. So, But you guys had known each other as long as Sticks, right? Didn't you pretty much get together like the same time that Sticks formed? In terms of my better half? Absolutely. So, you know, we we sort of uh, got together and got married in uh, 72. And uh, she passed, you know, just last year in 2022, just about this time of year last year. And uh, but she traveled with me all over North America, all over uh, all over Europe. And uh, she got to see the world uh, from from a, (laughs) a nice vantage point. And uh, I don't know, I've, I miss her, but uh, can't bring her back. But the, her memories and there's some amazing, beautiful photographs of her and people's recollection of her has been uh, has been just really amazing. So Now, my father's been doing an incredible amount of traveling. He's in Germany right now because my mother had passed away a few years ago. And shortly after that, his mom, my grandmother, passed away. And he was taking well, he was taking care of both of them up to their their death, like you know a year or two before, just with some health right. issues, and they needed full time care. So when they both passed, he was really kind of like untethered. I don't want to speak for him. I don't want to use the term lost, but he was saying like I, I took care of people for so long that now there's nobody to take care of. I don't really know what to do. And it wasn't like I don't have anything to do. It's that caring for somebody that he had loved for so much was gone and he's like i gotta relearn like what to do every day is there any relation to that because i know you also were taking care of your wife as well yeah well um you know my my mother set an example i had a sister became a quadriplegic when she had just been married for a few years and and uh, the husband stayed around for a while but ultimately left and she was in you know nursing home type facilities for a year or two and then my mom decided she didn't really like the care she was getting. So my mother brought my sister home, and uh, and then we just she had, would we had the means to hire outside help to come in and help my mom and stuff. And uh, same thing kind of happened um, with my better half. You know, some of the people that had worked at my mother's side taking care of my sister, they came in to help me take care of my my better half. And uh, I mean, we had a close to fifty years together, and we'd gone all over the world together, and. Uh, She'd seen the top of the mountain with me, so it's uh, I miss her. Can't bring her back, but there's there's the good news is there was always photographers around, and she she's very photogenic. So, and I've had a lot of people tell me that uh, if if I hadn't gotten to her, they would have <laughs> they, yeah. they would have wanted to date her. So, all that said, you know we have, I have amazing memories of of our life together, and I'm living in the house now that she completely redecorated when we bought it back back in the early '80s, and. Uh, so her spirit, I still her spirit, I'm still surrounded by. I didn't think about that. Now you've got complete control of the house as far as decorating. Do you get all the sticks 
platinum and gold records up because when you're in a relationship, <laughs> you, you know, when you're in a relationship, I've got some, you know, rock and roll memorabilia, but it's not exactly living room material since I'm married. So did that change at all? Now you're like, boy, I could really, you know, I could put some guitars in the kitchen. I could hang up the, the plaques in all the living rooms. <laughs> Well, uh, there, there's a few gold albums she allowed off in some of the, the corners of the house that uh, that were not, you know, that she didn't have to walk past every hour of every day. I don't know. This was her house she wanted and actually it belonged to one of my uncles. But it was an old Victorian or pre-Victorian. It was built in 1881, 1871. Poured a lot of money into it. And I, we live in a really nice suburb of city of Chicago, and I'm to about 20 minutes south of O'Hare and 20 minutes east of Midway, so I can get a nonstop flight pretty much to anywhere in the world at this point. And I, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a good spot here, and I miss her dearly, but there's beautiful photographs of her all over my house, and, uh, and the memories will shall live on. Now talk about some of the rock stars and bands you've seen come through Chicago growing up and you know starting your career in music. And, and I can run through a couple, too, that I'd love to get your thoughts on, because these are, are people that I've never seen live. The first, you know, everybody talks to you about this, Hendrix five times. When you first saw him the first time, was Hendrix Hendrix, or was it just the guy you wanted to see? Well, there was uh, another fellow that uh, I went to uh, Illinois Institute of Technology, because uh, my parents insisted that you know, they'd save for me to go to college. And and this was close as I could stay, and then my dad was in the construction business, so engineering was about as close as I could get to it. And uh, they had just started aerospace courses back, because they just really had started aerospace going back to the late 1960s. Uh, for me, it's just all been kind of, all kind of runs together, because technology is, is part of a necessity to, to making great records and then to, to making great videos and things like that. So I was a little bit of a leg up on a lot of people and how to get that kind of stuff done but my better half she was she shared the same taste so i saw hendrix five times uh i saw the who i think three times back back then with the daltry and townsend and moon <laughs> and that whistle thunderously awesome uh mahavishnu orchestra um which was sort of the most that was a jazz fusion thing but uh i just the way those the, the skill set of each of the individual on that stage was Awesome, and I wound up doing a solo album with Jan Hammer, the you know, keyboard synthesizer, synthesis, whatever. In 1984, that came out, my City Slicker album. I don't know, the, 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 whole, the whole circus ride that this has been has just been, it's been an awesome, fulfilling thing for me. We've played Japan, we played all over Canada, all over the United States, many European countries, and played on some big festivals where there's a lot of other acts. I may not have seen it all, but I saw a whole lot of it. Now, I'm super jealous, and I'm slightly obsessed with watching live performances of Albert King. What was he like in concert? Well, Albert King, uh, I loved his style of playing, and he, he was one of those bigger-built African-American blues guys that uh, I definitely lifted some stuff from his playing style. <laughs> a black man singing the blues, it's legit. It's, that's the source of the blues to me. Saw him play uh, Buddy Guy once or twice. Bo Diddley is, was the first vinyl LP I bought. Bo Diddley's a gunslinger. And I happen to be friends with his, his daughter now. Kind of uh, help her take care of certain things because of that, uh, the friendship I've made with, with Bo's daughter. I don't know. I've lived a rich, full life to this point and soon to be age 74. But love being on stage. Love making records. And... Uh, just love the camaraderie of having a great group of musicians around me. Our original drummer, John, was, was really a monster, but his re replacement, Todd Zuckerman, has been voted number one in Modern Drummer Magazine, I think, for the last 10 years in terms of rock drummers. You know, So to have those, that kind of art artillery at my side is, uh, I don't know, we've got, uh, I'm, I've been blessed. I've been Clint Eastwood lucky, is how I like to say it. Some bands are wrapping things up. Foreigner, Aerosmith doing some farewell tours, maybe Leonard Skinner. But then other bands, I mean, the Stones just announced, hey, we're doing another album. How do you look at the current state and future of the band Sticks? Is it anything you even talk about? Or is it like you just said, we love touring, we love making records. Is that the plan for now? 
we haven't had any real long discussions and we all kind of live far apart and we collect, you know, to, to go out and do shows, but there's a heavy pencil on a tour, a, a two or three act show tour going all across North America next year is in the cards. I want to keep going until they scrape me off the stage. I love doing what I do and being in front of people and then playing these songs that we collectively have, you know, brought the people's listening attention over decades. And we already have a bunch of replacement parts. Um, original drummer passed away a while ago. And but as I said, his replacement is, is a man that's probably 10, 15 years younger than me. And I think has been voted number one in Modern Drummer Magazine for the last 10 years in terms of rock drummers. So that's there. And uh, original keyboard player Dennis is not with us anymore. And uh, his replacement part is a Canadian superstar, Lawrence Gowan, who's just f- fits in and is kind of taken over the band in terms of being the MC. And, and Tommy Shaw loves what he's doing. Obviously, he's played with Nugent. He's in Damn Yankees. He's, he's played with other people, but he's the guy that wrote Too Much Time on My Hands. He's the guy that wrote Renegade. So Tommy's up for it. Ricky Phillips, he's, he's been in a number of bands, but he's a great bass player and he's rock solid. And I think he's with the program. A backup guitarist, uh, Will Vankovich, who's uh, also has yeah, production skills, and then he and Tommy likes writing with him, so he's become part of the package. And uh, so, I mean, I think we're set up for the next five or ten years, uh, health-wise and and motivation-wise. Television, uh, I've pretty much seen everything to, to, to be offered on television. So that's uh, although I, I, I do love NFL football, so that, that's something you never know where, which way that's going to go. So that's always fun to watch. Now, you guys do have a Greatest Hits album that you can buy exclusively at live stick shows, and proceeds for that are going to Maui. Talk about your connection to Hawaii and also mm-hmm. this, this album that people can get at the live shows. Well, um, for many moons, um, back in the old days, you know, we would all like to, in the winter, sort of not tour, and then it was a perfect time to get away to uh, a Hawaiian vacation. And my wife and I bought one condo uh, on Maui, after about going there for the second time, and then uh, next year we bought a, a second one. <laughs> my mother-in-law came with; she could she could have her own condo, and we could, my wife and I could have ours, and uh, but she could do what she wanted to do. And it's a, it's a tragedy, and I still don't exactly know how it happened. And it seems like when it's something an island's in the middle of a giant ocean, that there should be pumps that could pump seawater in there to, to stop that. So I, I don't I really I really haven't taken time to really look closely at the whole thing because uh, I did ultimately just a trip from Chicago to Maui. I mean Chicago to Honolulu is eight or nine hours on the plane and that's a long flight and then you got to go eight or nine hours coming back and then then you got to wait for the plane to Maui and then you got to rent a car and drive to the condo and this and that kind of a thing. So I loved Hawaiian vacations when I was younger, but God bless those people who have had to you know deal with the, the aftermath of that whole thing and our our prayers are with them. You run into any other rock stars out in Maui? I know like Steven Tyler and members from Metallica and just like oh, hundreds of different artists are out there. Surely you've seen other people either on flights or around the area. Well, my, my better half, she was kind of uh, a recluse in a way. I never really ran into anybody from, from the industry, maybe in the airport going or coming back. We'd run into some people. We opened some shows with Aerosmith going way back when, so we did some, a little bit of interaction with those guys going back. And we opened a lot of shows for Kiss. There was one time when uh, my wife, who'd, who had uh, an illness that sort of knocked her off her balance in a way, but she insisted on walking around in high heels. So I was sitting there talking to Gene and Paul, standing there talking to Gene, Gene and Paul, and my better half was, was feeling a little unstable, and she kind of put her... Her hand on Gene's leg, and oh no, <laughs> Jay, Jay, why your wife's got her hand on my leg? So <laughs> I said, "Well, enjoy your while it's there, Gene." So. <laughs> Have you gotten anything recorded? Do you record at home? Have you sent anything to uh, mm-hmm. to anybody else in the band? I know Tommy's busy writing, and I think Lawrence is busy writing. I have been less busy writing because I, I actually lost my wife now back uh, April, and it's just kind of it's. Uh, taking the steam out of my sails. In any event, I, I don't have anything new, but uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the team is, is wor- working. Uh, Tommy Tommy and Will, who's a, who's the new guy in the band, uh, Tommy loves to write with him, so I know they're writing. 
uh, Lawrence writes, and, and eventually, if uh, if it's meant to be, there'll be another six album. Yeah. When you had to take some time to do your thing, and I don't want to use the term step away from sticks, but at least back off a little bit, was that a tough conversation, or was it more of, <clears throat> I'm doing this, I'll talk to you when I talk to you, I need some time? I don't know. My better half was used to me being gone anyway. You know, she was she maybe spent a few weeks in the hospital, but uh, ultimately she came home and, and, and having had an older sister that became a quadriplegic, we had, my mother had a lot of outside help there and, and a, a number of those wonderful women who worked on my mother's side taking care of my sister came came to my rescue taking care of my wife and actually the my wife is Susie and then there's um, the, the the most amazing caregiver we ever had is another Susie who's been around and and uh and she's and now my wife has passed but now here she's working for me part time so uh the piggy musician doesn't have a piggy looking house thanks Donna. <laughs> J.Y. Young, thank you so much for the call today. We're going to see you September 23rd at the Morrison Center in Boise. I know you've got another Idaho date before that. So good luck yeah. on the road, and we, we can't wait to see you when you come through the Treasure Valley. Uh, we always love coming up to the Pacific Northwest. Idaho, we're ready to rock.